Marvel has been in a pretty rough patch lately. Their recent movie that they released called The Marvels is probably the worst movie they've made in years. It was so bad that they somehow did worse than the Flash movie. However, it's not just their movies. Marvel has created a bunch of different series that I think were solely created to make you regret being a Marvel fan. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier was honestly created because they wanted to prove that they didn't need their most interesting character to flesh out his friends slash side characters, and in the end, they didn't prove their point. Moon Knight was a show that I was honestly very excited to watch because I've seen the comics of him. He was like another version of Deadpool. He was funny and insane, but at the same time a badass. Then the show came out and was basically what would happen if a person suffered the worst sickness of all, having a British personality. I can barely keep a goldfish alive. I lost my job. It's been you. It's always been you. <laughs> Then there's She-Hulk, which is just... You know, I don't I don't need to talk about She-Hulk. This scene alone says a lot about the series. It, it, it's just a fucking terrible show. What I'm getting at here is that Marvel is trying their hardest to ruin all their IPs. The only IPs that I know of that they genuinely didn't manage to fuck up is Deadpool, Wolverine, and Spider-Man. But I'm not here to talk about those two yet. I'm mainly going to focus on Spider-Man. Okay, before we get down to business, there's something I have to tell you. I'm fresh out of honey. I don't know why, but I can definitely see that Marvel shows more love to Spider-Man than their other IPs. With Spider-Man Homecoming, to him dying in Infinity War, to Mysterio, and the Spider-Man. Not to mention the classics with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, and the best Spider-Man movies to date, Into and Across the Spider-Verse. It has definitely been great for Spider-Man over the past few years. Then there are the games. Now, I can't say anything about the old Spider-Man games because of multiple reasons. Either I didn't own the game, I didn't own the console, or I wasn't even born yet, nor did I have the cognitive thinking to understand these games. It's a shame because I missed moments like this. I'm going to die! And... <laughs> and this. However, I did play Spider-Man 2018. When this game first came out, I absolutely loved playing it. The movement, the story, the combat, everything about it was great. It really made you feel you like, like Spider-Man. Spider then they released Spider-Man Miles Morales, but I didn't play that one. But in 2023, they finally released Spider-Man 2. And after completing it 100%, here's the proof, I have to say that Spider-Man 2 is a phenomenal game and it's even better than the first. But once more, it's the very first PS5 exclusive, baby. Hell yeah! Finally! The PS5 has one game, folks. It only took them three years. Hell yeah! Fuck you, Xbox. Anyways, Spider-Man. The moment you start the game, you immediately get thrown into the most chaotic boss fight with Sam and right off the bat. Buildings are being thrown, swinging around trying to dodge shit, fighting Sandman, getting launched miles away. You get the picture. And after beating Sandman, you realize that was just the first boss. The entire story of Spider-Man 2 is amazing. Every character was great, and it felt like they were actually real people. Yuri Lowenthal did a great job again voicing Spider-Man. Now before I continue, we need to discuss one thing. The redesign of Peter and MJ. Before this, Peter looked like this. The people on the internet were furious about this, and by the people on the internet, I mean people on Twitter. Now, I'll be honest, I didn't like the change at first, but when I started the game, I knew that Peter's new look would grow on me, eventually, and it did. So the change is fine, but what confused me the most was they remodeled MJ, and I don't understand why they did this. I mean, it didn't really matter to me, eventually it grew on me just like Peter, but they didn't need to do this. Like, at all. Fun fact, I don't know if this is a glitch or they forgot to remove this, but later on in the story, Peter ends up checking his phone, and if you look closely at MJ's profile picture, it's her old player model. <laughs> uh, the wonders of getting a facelift or being a skinwalker, who knows. Either way, one of these theories are canon. Anyways, it's not just Peter. There is also Miles as well. Each of them has their own story and their own problems. Miles getting over his vengeance with Martin Lee and Peter trying to help Harry with his illness. Quote, help. 
and both of their plots are wrapped up with the help of the villains. The story revolves around two main villains, each with their own act. Act 1 revolves around the villain Craven the Hunter, or Sam Solik if he was fueled on Adderall, and Act 2 involves Venom, who, let's be honest here, puts the movie version of himself to shame. Rolling down the street like a turd in the wind. Both villains are great in their own right, but I like Kraven a lot more, and it's definitely because of the side missions, but I will get to that later. First, let's talk about the combat. The entire goal for this is to find out what kind of combo you can create to make the local criminals, cultists, and innocent people, because of the symbiotes, suffer through the American healthcare system. <laughs> There are a lot of options to choose from. They both have different pairs of abilities and different ability trees. They share an additional ability tree, gadgets, and their upgrades for health, strength, stuff like that. But what's more insane is the movement in this game. The movement in this game is better than the first one. I didn't actually know this, but if you compare the first and second Spider-Man game side by side, you can actually tell that the movement is a lot faster than the first. Anyways, there is a lot to the movement. Scattered around the city, there are these slingshot pads to launch you. You have these abilities that can make you faster or higher in the air. With the web sl with the web winger, or the <laughs> what? With the web wings, you can take the air currents to save time getting from point A to point B. And I don't know which ability this is, but if you upgrade enough, you can get to a point where if you do these air tricks, it charges up those movement abilities again. So you can keep doing this forever. But for some reason, when you're chasing someone in the main mission, they always tend to speed up somehow when you get close to them. But you know, I, I, I think that's just a bug. Oh yeah, I almost forgot they added a fast travel system. Which is just a big fuck you to the movement if you want my personal opinion. Get the f when I was 100%ing the game live, about maybe halfway through, I was able to fast travel to every point on the map, but I refused to do it because why would I want to fast travel when you have sick moves like this? <laughs> the only time that I actually used the fast travel system was after. I beat the game. I just, I don't understand. You made the movement faster, but still put in the fast travel system. Now, there's nothing wrong with putting this in. As long as it doesn't affect the gameplay, I couldn't care less. However, there is one problem with the movement. While I was having a good time with the movement, just, you know, chilling, you know, just swinging about, I had to periodically listen to Jameson. I can't stand Spider-Man. I can't stand him. I hate him. Now I talked about the main story, talked about the combat, and now I have talked about the movement. And if you put all this together, and what do you get? You get the side missions. There are 13 side missions in total that unlock over the course of the main story. And I'm going to talk about every single one of them. I'll start with the first side mission, Marco's Memories. The goal is to help Marco remember what happened to his daughter through these crystals scattered around the city. So it's like reverse dementia. Before you can take them, you have to fight sand minions. After you collect a certain amount of crystals, MJ gives you an update on Marco every so often and he improves mentally. Then once you get the second to last crystal and head to the final one, you get taken to what I assume is Sandman's consciousness? I don't know. This place is probably my favorite location, but at the same time, it definitely disappointed me the most. Once you reach the main crystal, you would think there would be some giant boss you would have to fight. But no, you just fight an endless horde of sand minions until you break the crystal. You don't even have to fight them, you can just ignore them and break the crystal entirely. And this is why I am sad about this place. Once you get to this crystal, you never see this place again. That's the last time you see it throughout the whole game. And since this is a place I'm not returning to, let me fight like a giant sand serpent or a big boss of the sand minions. Remember the dumbass sandbird that pissed everyone off in Mario? Sunshine, let me fight that instead. You have got to be fucking kidding. It's just this place could have been something bigger, but it was such a missed opportunity. However, I guess the ending was somewhat sweet. Marco gets better, he apologizes to Peter, and then tells him to give the crystals to his daughter, who was at her mother's house, which was weird because you would think that would be the first place to check where your daughter was. Also, the crystals that you get shape into a statue of Marco hugging his daughter. Okay, the more I talk about this, the weirder it sounds, so let's just move on. Let's- let's- let's just not talk about this anymore. It, it's a sweet ending, damn it. Second side mission, photo ops. Yes. The premises of this side mission is just to take photos of New York, which, I'll be honest, 
Taking these photos made me realize this version of New York is entirely inaccurate. Not once have I seen any trash bags. I didn't see any homeless people, no giant rats. I didn't see World of T-shirts threatening to sue me. And people actually look like they enjoy living in New York, which is really surprising. The reward for completing this is just XP, and that's about it. I didn't think it was bad. I, it was surprisingly just normal. The third side mission, Brooklyn Visions, you play as Miles to help students do a variety of things, like finding a mascot through a bunch of laser puzzles to helping a gay person ask his boyfriend to homecoming. How progressive. Or maybe too progressive, because apparently they removed any gay representation from the game in some countries. I don't know why, but I feel like I do. Once you complete everything, you get a new suit. Speaking of suits, there are a ton of them, for Miles and for Peter, each with different color palettes for each suit. I usually just stuck with Spider-Verse suits for Miles and the 2099 suit for uh, Peter. Where was I? Oh yeah, this suit fucking sucks. Fourth side mission, Power Stash. Again, I didn't play Miles Morales, so I don't know what happens in the story for that game, but apparently Uncle Aaron is reformed and wants Miles to collect his tech. All his tech is covered up by something invisible. You open them up and then you either go in and take the thing or you do puzzles like hitting electric boxes or going through vents with lasers. The puzzles are very easy, like putting the shape in the correct hole easy. It would have been nice if the more tech you got, the harder the puzzles would be, but it's fine. After you collect all the tech, you get a unique cutscene along with a new ability called Prowler Strike. It's a Miles exclusive where when you camouflage, the first strike you do has increased increased damage. You'll know when it happens when this purple stuff appears. I would show more of this, but no joke, this is the only time I actually use this ability. Fifth mission, the spider bots. Ah! Now, let me tell you, this mission fucking sucks. Doing this side mission genuinely annoyed me because practically all the side missions are marked on the map. It makes it easy to find the location, except for this one mission. There are about 42 spider bots scattered around the map and the only way to know where they are is from this bubble they emit. If you can't see it, you have to listen for the noise it makes, like I did. I would say what they could do to make it better, but I just despise this mission. And to top it all off, once you get all of the spider bots, you get a cutscene, which is just referencing Spider-Verse. Like, whoa, look at that! Look at that portal! Remember wow. Spider-Verse? Wait, 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 Miguel? Remember that guy? He committed child abuse, remember that? And once the cutscene ends, you don't get a suit, you don't get an ability, you just get XP for the trash you have to endure. Ugh, fuck, I, I really do hate this mission. I need to relax a bit, so let's just ease into the six side mission. Cultural Museum. Mayo gets some news that the famous musical instruments were stolen and it's up to him to find them. So you fight a bunch of people and eventually you catch the person who did all this. Now, the aftermath is a celebration in the museum. My favorite part about this scene is that the famous musicians in this museum that they're talking about are actually real people. Like, no, really, I looked it all up and they're actually real. I don't think people, like, care about that, but I love that small little detail they added. Once the mission is complete, you get a new suit, which looks decent. I mean, it's not my favorite suit, but compared to the last one, it's, it's really good. Now, I'm gonna do something a bit different. I'm gonna talk about the 7th and 8th mission together, which are Hunter's Blind and Unidentified Targets. The reason for this is because it centers around Kraven. These two missions are the reason why I like him as a character so much. Unidentified targets involve either Peter or Miles chasing down these birds. After that, you get these multiple targets from these birds and then you pinpoint the location from these people. After you get there and defeat these people with non-lethal methods, you head inside. Once inside, you start hearing a mysterious voice. Who's there? Make yourself at home. There's an RT. After exploring and unintentionally getting a checkmate first try, you enter a secret area. Once you enter there, you realize that this mysterious voice is the chameleon and reveals that Craven is his brother. I I think I'm not sure if he's actually his brother. I think they were just like childhood friends and they were close like brothers, but anyways. He tries to kill you with toxic gas, you escape very easily, and the side mission ends with Chameleon on another building plotting to kill Spider-Man. You don't get a new suit or an ability, just XP, but at least it was 
marked on the map, unlike this shit show. Then there is Hunter's Blind. The goal is to fight two to three Hunter outposts to locate an even bigger outpost. I honestly like this side mission because it's basically just fighting. You show up, you kick the shit out of everyone, find the location, and then you leave and do it again. But sometimes they kick the shit out of me as well. After you take down the bigger outposts, you get audio recordings of Craven and his family. The family consists of, well, Craven, his wife, his two sons, and his daughter. And, <laughs> and let me tell you, I haven't seen a family dynamic like this since Daddy 05. Anyways, the last recording of the Hunter's Blind is his daughter telling him that she killed every family member and says that she is after him next. And that is the end of Hunter's Blind. And the reward for this is this cool suit. In all honesty, I think this was the most fun side mission I did. I just really like having the side missions as a way to expand on different characters as a whole and the combat with the side missions is just the icing on the cake. Now let's move on to the ninth side mission. FNSM requests. Now, each request from this side mission is different. Getting rid of illegal fireworks, helping a photographer getting a picture of Spider-Man while having a flashback about Peter meeting Jameson, and helping a blind woman help find a monster in her backyard only to realize it's a giant robot dog. And the two most memorable ones being the Howard and Grandpa Earl mission. These two requests alone were very emotional scenes. Well, for everyone else, not for me. Uh, Anyways, I can't exactly describe in words, so you just need to experience it yourself. Also, I just realized that FNSM stands for Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Now for the 10th side mission, Symbiote Nests. After Venom gave everyone a taste of his 19 inches, they decided to make these nests, so now you have to destroy them. The whole thing is basically to protect the objective. You have to defend the bomb that's about to go off from the symbiotes. I mean, there's not a lot to talk about this one, I mean, you get a cool suit, I mean, I guess, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, there's not a lot to talk about this mission. There's, uh, there's not a lot to add to it. Okay, the 11 side mission, EMF experiments. A bunch of scientists makes these tables to make a simulation on how to make the environment better through these little mini games. Plant attributes, preventing different species from eating bees, that includes harassing a bird, fishing, and riding a bike. The final experiment for this is a plant attribute mini game, and I'm not kidding, it took me about 20 minutes to figure this out. I don't know why, I, it just, it was, it was pretty tough. All right, after completing this final mission, you get a new suit. However, the problem with this is that the final mission can only be completed after the game. And at that point, I already completed all the side missions, so it's, it's like kind of dumb. Now, the final two side missions I'm about to talk about are probably the biggest, considering that both of them have unique boss fights. The 12th side mission, Mysterium. <laughs> In the main story, we meet a reformed Mysterio opening up his new project, the Mysterium. When I first played this in the main story, I thought that it was just going to be like a rhythm game. I mean, but I was wrong, it's just it's just challenges. From using finishers for a certain amount of time, to not getting hit, to killing a certain amount of enemies, and to be honest, I did struggle with a few of these. One of them was beat 20 enemies in one minute. I spent about an hour trying to do this and it, I, it was literally impossible, I just couldn't do it. So I had to leave, level up and come back and I eventually won. That sucked. I honestly think that this specific challenge is not balanced, or maybe it is, and it's just a skill issue for- Anyways, once you complete all of them, you get a message from Quentin's friends saying that he's trying to kill them. And then he calls Miles and says this. Spider-Man, we need to meet. Come to Coney Island, I have an urgent matter to discuss with you. How trustworthy. Once you get there, you end up fighting Mysterio himself. This boss is somewhat unique. He shoots flying skulls, lasers, this shockwave, and that's about it. This boss isn't that interesting. However, the stage you fight him in is. This part where the illusion distorts the world around you while chasing Mysterio himself is my favorite part. Then halfway through, the boss ends up splitting himself into more Mysterios. All in all, it's a very easy boss. Once you beat him, you realize that it was Quentin's friends that did this, and he was locked in a closet. After they go to jail, Miles and Quentin have a back and forth. He then leaves, then the side mission ends. The reward for this is a Mysterio-themed suit. I mean, I keep mentioning these suits that you get from the side missions, but I only wore like one of them.
And now, the final side mission. The flame. Personal opinion here, but I think the story for The Flame could have been a part of the main story if they took a different direction. The Flame is centered around a cult that are obsessed with an event called the Crimson Hour, and like most cults, everyone in them are basically fucking psychopaths. You can compare the Cult of the Flame's actions with Dream Stands, BTS Stands, and Swifties, and you would be shocked how similar they all are. Along with Spider-Man is a familiar face, Yuri, or Wraith, to find the leader and perform non-lethal methods on him. Speaking himself as I prophesy. Or not. I guess. Over this entire story, Peter and Yuri argue about their methods of saving. Peter wants to save lives without killing people. For example, Peter saves this person from having a functional body. Yuri wants to save people through killing the villains, hence the stabbing. It gets so bad that after Spider-Man saves the cult leader from a British simulator, you end up fighting Yuri. And after displaying of what I can assume is Insomniac's take on gender equality, they escape the building they're in, only to realize that the cult leader is gone. Which only makes Yuri even more furious. You need to figure out your priorities. Then, the final mission involves defusing the bombs and preventing the Crimson Hour. Which, I think the bombs are, are the Crimson Hour, but uh, whatever. Then, at some point, they have to derail this train. Uh, I, I don't know. The, I'm not really keeping up at this point. They succeed, but Spider-Man ends up getting crushed by said train. Then, realizing it, that's what the cult leader wanted all along as they take a red symbiote. See where I'm going with this? That's right, the cult leader is actually Cletus Cassidy because Carnage, remember Carnage? That's crazy, <laughs> like wow. Before Cletus leaves, he ends up pouring oil on Peter and starts burning him alive, but then Yuri saves him. Which, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but Peter gets hurt a fuck ton in this game and I don't know why it happens. Relax and be a good proton. Huh? Stay positive. Anyways, the side mission ends with them saying that they'll find him and then you get a new suit. But at this point, I just don't really care about this. I don't really care about the suits anymore. The only thing bad about the side mission is that it ends on a cliffhanger. Like, I was expecting to fight Carnage, but no. No, I, I guess that they're saving that fight for Spider-Man 3, which comes out in 2027 when I'm 24. <laughs> Fuck, I'm getting old. Now, before I give my final thoughts on this game, there are a few extra things that I want to talk about. For starters, the glitches. Now, there are funny glitches, and then there are glitches that are annoying. Funny glitches that I experienced. Jackets not being recognized in cutscenes or web glider. Car breeding. Cars clipping through the buildings. Sometimes I fight enemies so hard that I send them to the back rooms. Sometimes I fight so hard that I end up clipping through the map. Game not taking size in perspective. Like, the, the house is too big, guys, and they're way too small. Do you not see this? Spinning. And whatever is happening to this dog, I, I don't know. This is the first time I see this. Then the annoying glitches. However, it's just one glitch. And that is getting soft lock in certain moments in the main story. You will not believe how many times I've experienced this. Game? Game? Hello? Bruh, you gotta be kidding me. What's going on here? It's soft lock again. <laughs> Another thing that I want to mention is the difficulty. Since I barely upload on my channel, I lack a sense of accomplishment. That is why I played on the hardest difficulty. Even though I died... Guys! <laughs> a lot, sometimes unintentional, the game was still relatively easy. In fact, it felt so easy that I thought that I was in normal mode. Like, here's the thing, I'm not trying to flex or anything, I'm just saying that it felt too easy for the max difficulty, but I guess that's the result of having an ability that predicts an attack before it happens. But I guess that's just my opinion, I guess that's just like the result of me playing a bunch of hard games, but I mean, you know, that I think that's just my opinion. In summary, Spider-Man 2 is a good game. The story was great, the characters were great, they added a lot of improvements and changes, some unnecessary and some needed. Even though this game has flaws, I still recommend people to play this game. It's a very fun experience and I think people will enjoy it. Like it's just a, it's an act, it's a really fun game and it's great. I'm gonna give Spider-Man 2 a 7.5 out of 10. In all honesty, I'm not expecting this video to do that well. The only benefit that I will get from this video is letting everyone know that I'm still alive and still making content. And I will try to upload 
as frequently as I can. And this time I actually mean it. And if I don't, then I will eat a raw egg. And I'm not really looking forward to that because uh, Michael Reeves did it and he had a very <laughs> interesting reaction to it. But uh, yeah, I'm glad to be back. I will try to upload more frequently. Uh, that is about it. I will see you guys in 2024. Uh, okay, bye. It's great to be back! Great! <laughs>